So, hello everybody. So I will continue to talk about certitude, but from a different perspective. So basically, I work in a team in uh, Freescale in Munich. We do basic SEC designs, but we also have the pleasure to do heat level, which is kind of unique within Freescale, but we do both, and gives us also some freedom to basically uh, enrich the whole verification process from the module to the SOC. But this talk is, is about um, the SOC level verification and the usage of certitude for that. Uh, maybe you have seen uh, a similar paper at SNAC, and there's a, a, a one basically for certitude of module level, which is then, again, a different uh, kind of story. We also use certitude for formal, and we also try to bridge these two worlds between these two things. So this is basically the agenda. Um, I, I will start to talk about the motivation, why we, we did that presentation in essence. Um, then second is about the different steps we heard already from Holger, so the setup, the activation detection phase, then a little bit about the completion, so when we are done, and then a few words about the conclusion. So starting with the motivation. Uh, in the past, we have done toggle coverage, which basically gives you some insight on you do not have complete black holes in your verification, but it doesn't tell you if everything was toggled that you basically verified those things. Because if you see a clock network, uh, it's toggling on its own, and nobody is basically checking that it's correctly or it's stopping at the right time. So toggle coverage has not that much information. On the other hand, of course, it, and I think we started a discussion already, it doesn't, also, doesn't mean if you have 100% solid coverage that you not, do not have any bugs. Uh, it just gives you some more uh, confidence that you're closer to that point, but you're not there. Also, certitude is not giving you that 100% uh, proof. Uh, the other thing is, as I said, we basically do SOC verification. We also do module level, so we we have both things, but we also get uh, uh, IP uh, and verification IP from outside, and there is some kind of documentation with it that tries to explain you what it can do, but sometimes the difference between documentation and the real code you get is not so uh, small, and so it's also good to uh, look at uh, certitude as a kind of incoming inspection tool that basically can prove that all those ports which you're looking for to be integrated correctly are actually checked by those test cases. Um, the other thing um, that we have seen or basically try to address with this paper is uh, all the things that come in mind with talking about certitude in the simulation, meaning you have faults and you have test cases and worst case multiply both and this is the number of simulations you run. So this is uh, kind of the setup and, and, and runtime problem uh, and will be uh, addressed uh, in this paper what we have seen so far on it. And of course, the setup time is also something um, we are in the happy situation that we have small designs, which makes our runtime quite, um, quite good. On the other hand, the expectation is you have a small design, you have no time. So basically, maybe we have three months of uh, uh, time for doing a tape out from starting the project, whereas if you compare this to our 32 bit or big projects, they have one year and two years. So setting up things is not really a big thing, but uh, because it's kind of white noise, whereas on our end it's uh, already a big point or time that we have to spend. Setup, um, so these are the three steps. Basically I, I combined one, the setup uh, and activate is also co covering the modeling phase, which was mentioned before. So that we actually have basically the environment. So we have a sting we have basically a design system called Stingray, which is used within Freescale um, that defines the directory structure. And so basically, what we do here, getting the information out from this uh, environment into the solitude setup. Uh, then we basically uh, compile the design. Uh, and, and do the activation, meaning kind of the uh, toggle coverage equivalent. And last but not least, we do the detection phase. That's where you get the value, where you see what's the difference between your toggle coverage and the real detection measured by solitude. 
So let's start with, with the setup and here in contrast to the previous one we get a little more into details about what Solitude does for the simulation. So um, we basically create in the setup phase uh, a file called uh, uh, Solitude test case where we collect all the test cases we have in the environment. Since we have a kind of predefined regression environment we can automatically translate this into this file. Uh, from our design system, we extract basically all files that we need to feed into Solitude so that we can do the modeling and insert in the faults. And here we will see also a little bit what this means for SOC. Um, we have also a template for the uh, configuration. As we heard, there are many, many, many com uh, uh, configurations possible and even more not documented. Um, and there is a set in there which is recommended and last but not least, all the files which are required for actually executing then uh, the job, meaning one for, in our case, LSF, to compile the design and to, to run the design and test cases. So first we look at this. Uh, it's just an example. I think everybody of you will have an environment. In our case it's called Regression Council with Test Cruncher. And so we basically replace this one tool with the other one and keep the rest the same. So we have uh, basically at least uh, kind of partitioning that allows us to, to uh, keep the main part the same. So if we get back to normal simulation, we don't need to figure out what was Solitude doing before. Uh, we can reproduce that quite well. Uh, the other thing is the test cases. And this is how this looks like. Uh, and here we see already a, a first kind of hint of what we, we figured out. So basically this is the command. All of this is Tiggle. Um, we have test case groups uh, introduced and basically have the test case. This is extracted in essence from our regression environment. Uh, these are the categories we had basically in our regression environment and they become uh, these test case groups. And we will see later on how we benefit from this. Yeah. Then the other thing, are, of course, is the HDL files. So we have a top level with three blocks in it. And here you see you can add system Verilog files and Verilog files for those things. And here you already see the thing that you have to do by hand in this step. Uh, since we do SOC level, we don't want to basically qualify every file in here because we are not, we are not interested in the false deep inside of block A. This is the job of the model implementation. Um, we don't get much get overwhelmed with thousands of faults we never reach because we don't run every test case at the SOC. So we, as in essence, qualify just the top level file and one level below. And this is then the first manual step you have to do. You basically get this list, you add then the qualification kind of command to those uh, files of interest. This gets you down with the number of faults certitude has to cope with. And then, of course, this uh, initial setup that we have, and this is just yeah, the basic things, what the top level name, what's our simulator, uh, what we try to do, we want to do connectivity, then this is basically the top level file, and one level below at the moment, how many jobs we want to run, how many did we get from project management to run, uh, timeout, uh, heartbeat, and basically here our batch script that is then executing the, the simulations. And there are many more and not documented, but this is a kind of, just to give you a, a kind of uh, feeling on what this configuration file looks like. Activation, so this is, is the flow. You will see a similar picture also in the user documentation. Um, if you get to the activation numbers at the end, you can see this as a comparable to your toggle. Uh, kind of activation uh, and the goal is to get 200% analyzed because you will not have everything toggling because you have scan nets in there and this and other things and you don't care about this normally in functional verification so you need to basically get an analyzed uh, coverage saying okay these are the things we wanted to cover with our activation and the other things we don't care and so what do we do? Um, we have created this test case group or scripted for this, this for us. Then we run basically the whole thing uh, at the SOC and the command for this is simple like that. Um, then if you basically see everything 
is covered, you don't need that. If you basically see something is not activated, you get down to this level and you need to reset a certain test case and uh, activate the test cases again to see that the not activated false are now covered. The detection looks similar. Um, we want now to prove that this activated false gets detected by a test bench, meaning a test case complains, oh, there was an error if there was one inserted, and again, we want to get to 100% analyzed. This here is in essence the same as for the active register, in essence the same as something not being uh, addressed, we create a new one, we reset, we write again, and come back to here, back to here. Uh, uh, but the key is here on the detection itself, and there are different approaches possible, and, and I will show now two, I think, or three uh, examples for that. Um, what's the difference from module to SOC? Runtime, number of faults, if you basically would consider everything, then way too much, and number of test cases. And the other thing is, every test case you run at the SOC will cover a lot of, or will activate a lot of things which it actually doesn't check. So it's very, very difficult for certitude to figure out what's the right test case to figure, to find out something, and that's the main thing. Or you can help it. That's, okay, that looks a little different than uh, on the original one. But what it um, tries to say is you have a, a fault provided by block A, um, and this, these are the faults and these are the, 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 the test cases. You see it will cover also test cases potentially on a block B or faults on a block B and, and vice versa. So those test cases have more activation than it checks, and therefore you need to, to help. So that you therefore need to help. Oops to get to the um, false detection faster. So the first thing you can think of, you take your test cases, you run everything, and you will see you will end up in getting nowhere. So we had something like 232 test cases, and you see the number of faults that you cover out of 2,300, uh, you get to something like 6% after 900 hours. So, well, Synopsis is happy, they sell a lot of licenses, our computers are busy, and, uh, but in essence, it's not really effective. So, after this experiment, we moved, after this experiment, we moved basically to a, a different approach, which is instance based. So we um, run the patterns only on a on a certain block, like here for block B, and this faults here. Um, and this is the command for it. And here you see this 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 custom kind of tickle code we have created. Um, and you get basically to, in 120 minutes, you have covered all the faults for this block, which is a reasonable turnaround time if you basically think you start this in the evening and the next morning you see what you have covered and what you didn't. This is the, the ticket code to it, but uh, forget it. Um, after a while, basically, the, the, this kind of ticket code was no, no longer uh, uh, needed, and you can use official commands for this. So you do the activation. You disable all faults, you just enable the faults for this block B. When you disable all test cases, you enable just the test cases for block B, and here you see the test case group comes into the play again, and then you run your detect, and then it's just running basically on the, on the uh, faults which are associated with, with your instance. And it's you and it's you to your goal or to, to, to uh, answer uh, fast enough to actually make it work. And the other thing that basically what we looked at is basically going down one level further. So from the instance to a signal instance level, level. Um, sorry. But uh, and this is how basically we specify it. Uh, you have this command um, for that. Uh, but we don't use this so much. It's, it would be of use if you go down kind of an ECO flow where you want to see, okay, we change in this area things. Um, are we still okay? Uh, then you could use this. We use, in essence, mainstream the, the second method on the instance base. Completion, um, yeah, this gets down to this analyzed, uh, and I think it was also mentioned by Tim, you have a lot of faults you don't want to, to cover, uh, and you need to, to wave those things, so you want to get to 100% analyzed. Um, waving can be done in the GUI, you have a ticket command, you want to get everything are detected, nothing is not detected, and this is how you can basically specify this in, in a ticket command to, to wave something. 
Jusne, ja kip te skezi short, which are, you should basically stop at, at the first error, also for assertions, you can use this if you have this in your test case. Um, you should also have enough disk space, which is not mentioned here, which is also uh, sometimes a big problem if you run over an item and you send it out, you test your memory was running, uh, disk space was running out of space playlist. Uh, it's also it's nice. And especially if you use clear cases like, like we do, it's even worse because, it is, because the built-in mechanism doesn't work. Uh, so it's, it's nice. Uh, conclusions there. So what have we found basically? We basically found, well, we had a lot of test cases that we reuse from module level to SOC, and sometimes you forget one or the other because it's maybe a, a feature uh, based test case, and you think this feature is not used, but it is used. Um, you find the kind of getting test cases passing fast by commenting the error message, um, and you find problems in the infrastructure. Um, this instance-based detection helps us to get basically to a, to a detection to a detection in a reasonable time. The caveat, I think it is more on, on this. I don't know if the new version is basically addressing this. The rating of undetected faults is still cumbersome. I would like to have it like we have in DDE, where you basically can use the GUI and store a file and say, okay, this is what I have covered. Right now you have to create a particular code by hand, which is not as nice. I hope I catched up a bit. I hope I wasn't too fast. <laughs>